let's continue with our video series and today's topic will be time package so as we all know time is one of the most widely used packages uh, amongst the go packages because uh, it actually provides us a way to handle time related operations such as including or measuring uh, such as including time and displaying time as well as you can also perform formatting as well as passing of uh, time strings and calculation of uh, date and time types so here i have a documentation open which is official documentation provided by go for the time package where you can see there are a couple of uh, uh, functions the types and the indexes which has been provided uh, in this documentation so if you look closely we have uh, been provided some of the important functions predefined functions uh, from the package itself to provide uh, to uh, perform certain operations which we will talk about later so if you can check there are variables of uh, also uh, provided some of the constants which we are uh, not going to use now but we can uh, use uh, one of uh, the constants uh, in our upcoming example and the main point is here so basically this package provides lot of predefined functionality uh, which is uh, most widely used so one of that i can show you is uh, time dot date so this is one of the most uh, important ones uh, where we can actually uh, print out the year month and uh, day we can extract these kind of values from the package so this is one of the most uh, important ones the second one will be uh, time dot now so time dot now is also a very important package uh, from which you can extract uh, the current time stamp so the third one is uh, time dot uh, add so this is a uh, this is very important package uh, if you want to perform some kind of operation where you want to add some time into the existing time so this is what uh, the time package looks like let's talk about one more which is time dot format so if you check this time dot format this this actually help us to format the original time to a readable string so this is also very important package which we can uh, use in our uh, daily coding so let's go to the vs code editor and try to solve a problem regarding time package so currently i'm at my vs code editor uh, so let's take an example where uh, the disc the already discussed packages which i already discussed uh, in the previous slide that we can try to implement here so as i already mentioned for time dot date so for time dot uh, date we can use it like this so we can pass on the year as well as the month the uh, day and the hour also so you can pass it everything like that so let's create first of all a uh, time object so i'll create a function which will explain time method that will take time dot date so if you can check in the documentation also this takes a lot of uh, parameters but we do not need to pass each and everything but let's take so i'll pass the current year here time dot <clears throat> so we can directly pass time dot june here because uh, it will reflect to the the month which you pass then the day as well as the uh, date that's it i think time dot utc that will be in utc format right so in this way you can uh, use time dot date package to print the time in very ordered form so if you do a print ln if you do a print ln here original time which we can print is t so let's first of all uh, i'll call this function the main let's try to run this one so this is what uh, it says so this is the year which is 2024 then the 6 month and the 26 date and this is a time and this is a utc time stamp so let's move forward and uh, try to add some time using uh, time dot time dot add feature you can do time dot uh, whatever the uh, time variable as well as the add so we will do the same thing here, here also so duration to add let's say this is the variable which is defined so what i'll do is let's multiply time dot hour so i am going to add 24 hour into our existing time where the new time will be 
equals to t dot add and the duration the duration to add. So, uh, let us add a time. So, let us print out first of all this one uh, time after adding. So, the time after adding uh, 24 hours that will be our new time. Uh, okay, I think I did a mistake here. So, this should be oh that is fine. Okay, So, this here we are only adding it. So, that is fine. So, let us uh, compile this one. So, if you add 24 hours in this one, it will uh, reflect to the new date which is 27th. So, this is how you can actually uh, do addition of time in the current time. So, let us move forward and try to uh, create another time object for some kind of comparison. Uh, so, for that I will create a I will take a variable t 2 and do a time dot date that will contain 2024 as well as time dot June uh, 27th 12th 0 0 0 yeah and time dot UTC. So, this is how we have created it let us print it out again. So, a new time will be equals to t 2. So, if you print it out uh, you will get a new time as this one. So, this is same as our uh, time after addition of 24 hours. So, going ahead we can uh, do a formatting on the original time to a certain kind of readable string. So, formatted time uh, which will be uh, which I already showed you this will be time dot format uh, time dot format package that we can use and uh, we can uh, directly use time dot format which should be present somewhere uh, if I just use this one So, if let us search for format directly, I hope we can able to find it. So, using the same thing we can do it. So, the time zone attached to the time will affect its output uh, where we are uh, passing the same thing in UTC here and I think uh, uh, yeah, we are just doing the formatting of Unix state. So, I am going to do the same thing here. So, let us do the uh, formatting formatting part where t dot format and for the t dot format what I am going to pass is a Monday, Monday, January 2, 2006 let us say and 1504 then 5 MST yeah. Let us print it. Uh, if you print it directly formatted time. So, this should be formatted. So, let us print the formatted time also. So, if you print the formatted time you can see uh, this uh, this thing in this particular format. So, this is a standard way of representing the format which in which we wanted uh, the, the result to look like. So, I am printing it in same readable format. This will uh, print today's uh, day as well as the date uh, as well as the year. Uh, so, this is how you can do it, formatting of time. So, if you move forward, let us do a parsing also. So, in order to perform parsing, you have to first of all create a string which will be time string. Uh, let us uh, put everything inside a string 2024, uh, 06, then 26. Uh, this will be today's time. So, let us assume this as this time then parse time and an error. So, this will return a parse time as well as an error. So, time dot parse time dot. So, the format which we are going to use here is uh, RFC. Uh, so, this should work yeah. 
so this particular format is a kind of a constant in go time package which actually defines the standard layout for representing uh, date and time uh, so this is that's why we are using uh, this kind of formatting uh, in order to represent our time package uh, so this is also a subset for iso 8601 which is a standard package of representing time so you can also try this out so time time dot string so i'm going to uh, format this out uh, in this so error if everything so if we uh, encounter any kind of error while passing we'll do fmt dot uh, println error while passing time it will be an error otherwise let's print out let's print out past time past time here right so let's move forward and run it so so this is what we the past time we got from the string to the time itself so everything went well that's why we are getting the result here so let's move forward and uh, let's try to get the current local time using time dot now which we already discussed so current time so value is time dot now time dot now so if you print this time dot now uh, you will get current local time which is current time let's move forward in the documentation and check uh, the functions which i showed you in the uh, in the starting of the video uh, which was time dot sleep time dot tick and time dot after let's try to uh, implement some of them first of all is time dot tick which basically takes the duration and return a channel of time so let's uh, replicate this uh, same thing in our code also so in order to do that uh, let me first of all do a do a println and starting a ticker and we can do it in one second interval one second interval right so for that let's take ticker that will do a time dot tick and for every one second this will be printing something so let's do it for i equals to 0 till 5 let's try to print it and uh, i will send the ticker each and every time to the channel do it fmt dot print ln uh, tick okay so and we'll be incrementing this counter every time right so if you do that uh, let's clear this out first of all and then let's check here so for take so this will uh, print in every one second uh, interval it will print this this thing so at the last let's talk about uh, using uh, uh, one more very important uh, uh, function which is time dot sleep so as the name suggests it will it will just delay the execution for some certain period of time whatever you pass in the time dot sleep so we will do the same thing in here only so for that let's do a println uh, sleeping for two seconds so time dot sleep and uh, going to time dot sleep so it will be time dot seconds yeah so this will be time dot second then we'll print uh, awake after sleep so let's try to run this one also if you run this one it will first of all it will print all the uh, tick until 5 and then it will sleep for 2 seconds and after a delay it will return a sleep so this is how basically you can uh, use time package in order to perform some operations and do the parsing of time if you have any doubt regarding the video you can just comment down in the comment section i'll try to help out and you can also check my previous videos in order to get more understanding on golang so thanks for watching